Hey people, it's Jackal, and I'm going to be following up my video on the last alliance total war covering the roster of the Haradrim Black Snake Clan by doing an accompanying video on their tribal rivals, the Haradrim Golden Lion Clan. For those of you new to the channel, the last alliance total war is a mod for Total War Shogun 2, set in the second age of Middle Earth, in comparison to the Attila Total War mod, Rise of Mordor, which is set in the late third age, so imagine this as a spiritual prequel of sorts. Currently, the mod is in development, being in the version 0.2.7 alpha, or that may be somewhat early in the mod's development, there's still a fair bit of content to see in the mod, with several factions and a small campaign being ready to play. For those of you interested in the mod, I'm going to leave it linked in the description, and I do encourage you to play. Today's video, as I said, will be a faction breakdown, with me going over the history within both the books and the films of Tolkien's universe of the Haradrim Golden Lion Clan, before looking at the civilizations that inspired them in real life. After that, I'm going to look at the faction's units and break them down, covering their battlefield roles as well as looking at their equipment and seeing how historically authentic it is. Now that you know what mod we're looking at, and what the video itself is going to cover, let's start by going over the general overview of today's faction, the Haradrim Golden Lion Clan. As I said in my last video on this mod, the Haradrim are the humans living in the southern wastes and jungles of Middle-earth, their population being split into numerous warring clans fighting for survival and domination, their tribal disputes stretching across the ages, being just as prominent in the second age of Middle-earth as in its third age. During the second age, the various Haradrim groups and tribes are split, many choosing to support the Dark Lord Sauron, seeing him as an opportunity to free themselves from their subjugation at the hands of the Numenorians who had colonised them, loyally serving Sauron for millennia in his wars against the free peoples of Middle-earth, while others were more wary of Sauron and saw in him a tyrant who would dominate them for eternity if possible. As far as I know, the Golden Lion Clan isn't a clan that's mentioned by name in Tolkien's work, although if I am wrong, please let me know in the comments, I'm always open to filling gaps in my knowledge. Me personally taking the position that they're meant to be an example of just how fractured the Haradrim populations are. In the films, the Haradrim of the Second Age are never shown, although it's made clear in the books that many of them served Sauron during the War of the Last Alliance at the close of the Second Age. Though given that the symbol of the Golden Lion is never referenced in connection to Sauron, the way the Black Serpent is in the Lord of the Rings books, you could reasonably assume that the Golden Lion Clan are meant to represent the Haradrim who chose to take up arms against Sauron and his supporters, rather than fall under his sway. In terms of historical cultures who may have inspired the faction, I find the nomadic and tribal groups of North Africa and the Middle East to be the most likely contenders, especially groups like the Bedouin. Before we begin looking at the units, I must make it clear that pretty much every unit in this roster is shared with the Black Snake Clan, the units almost always sharing the same equipment, although there are some differences, both visual and aesthetic wise which will serve to differentiate the two factions more effectively. With that out of the way and the history of the faction both in and out of universe looked at, let's move on to the units themselves. Unlike Rise of Mordor, in which generals can sometimes be more elite units that can be used multiple times in one army, the generals in this mod are unique, with each faction generally only having two generals. The first general for the Golden Lion Clan is the Serpent Guard, a unit shared with the Black Snake Clan and whose name sounds more in line with that faction than this one. Looking at these heavy cavalrymen, both rider and horse are covered head to toe in armour, being identical to their Black Snake Clan counterparts in appearance except for their green robes, shields and banners. The horses are covered entirely in scale barding, a very widely used type of armour in history by people such as the Byzantines, the Parthians, the Sassanids and the Cumans just to name a few, the armour being great at providing protection and being easy to repair compared to plate armour. Turning to the riders, each man wears a faceted conical helmet that greatly reminds me of nasal helms of both Islamic and European designs, as well as the acorn style helmets utilised by the Ottomans, the helmets having cheek guards and nose guards which in the universe resemble the helmets of the Numenorians implying the sharing of technology between both peoples. Finally, the helmets have a gilded snake as part of their nasal guard, which seems odd given that these are warriors of the Lion Clan, perhaps indicating that the unit models aren't finished yet. Underneath their helmets, each man wears a male cloak and avantail which protects the neck and upper torso. For their body, each warrior wears a scale or lamellar coat with the appropriate rider split, this being the main protection for their bodies over their silken robes. Protecting their arms, each man wears a manica, overlapping plates of armour covering the arm, highly reminiscent of those utilised by Roman troops and gladiators such as the heavy crew Polari. For their hands, they have leather gloves and the feet are protected by leather riding boots, or strapped onto their back the wicker frameworks, much like those used by the Haradrim of the Third Age, but also the wicker structures used by tribal warriors in Southeast Asia and parts of Africa, making for a cool unit aesthetic. For shields, each man has a fair-sized round wooden shield covered with leather or rawhide, with symbols painted on top, symbols of the sun, snakes and scorpions mainly all classic Haradrim symbols. 
The shields of metal nails include into their framing, which makes sense and was done historically to give shields greater strength and durability in combat. Shields to such armoured troops make a lot of sense, as it was only really when men covered themselves entirely in plate that shields were generally discarded by heavy cavalry. For their weapons, all in the unit ruled one-handed swords for melee. The swords having no guard were looking a lot like traditional arrow blades, which were actually straight. These weapons looking to be dedicated cutters rather than thrusters, much like their historical counterpart. The main weapon used by each man, of course, is the lance, which all have wavy tips looking like a flamboyish sword, suggesting these lances can somewhat cut, although in reality, lances were designed to punch through armour rather than cut enemies. Looking at who I'm assuming is the unit officer, is equipped mostly identically to his men, wearing a lamellar hauberk with a nasal helm that very much resembles those used by Arab warriors in the Crusades, having what looks to be inlaid leather on his cheek guards. The helmet is topped with a serpent, which again doesn't make sense, just like the whole unit kind of doesn't make sense, as I've said before. Looking at the unit standard bearer, he has a massive banner emblazoned with the symbol of the golden lion on the framing on his back, his frame being topped with lance head rather than the wood or wither of the regular warriors in the unit. As a unit, these guys have a cheaper option of general and playing with the Golden Lion Clan, and can put in a lot of good work, being very good at countering other mounted generals and being perfect for running down ranged generals, being a good unit overall and making a nice counterpart compared to the faction's other general. The second general option for the Golden Lion Harajan Clan is who I'm assuming is a leader called Ikramar, leads a unit called the Golden Lion Guard, Ikramar perhaps being the name of the Golden Lion himself. These warriors are heavy melee infantry rather than shock cavalry like the two Black Serpent Generals, helping differentiate the two factions. Looking at the warriors' equipment, they lack helmets for the most part, although some have the same Numenorean-inspired helmets as the previous unit. Most of these troops instead of wearing male coifs over which they wear turbans, an effective combination for head protection given turbans are known to be useful in lessening cuts, especially when paired with mail. For their bodies, the men wear a mix of scale and lamellar hauberks with a rider split, which doesn't make much sense given that these are infantry. Protecting their upper arms, they have a lamellar rear brace while their forearms are protected by segmented van braces, this being the extent of their armour. For shields, they use the same round shields as the previous unit, while the weapon of choice appears to be a boar mace, such weapons seeing heavy use in history by people such as the Mongols and the Sassanids, the weapon being a perfect counter for heavily armoured enemies, crushing them within their armour. To round off their look, every man has a ubiquitous framework on their back, while underneath their armour they wear flowing clothes. Looking at Ikramar himself, he wears unique armour, having a lamellar hauberk over which he wears a plate, breastplate engraved with the symbol of the golden lion, such ornamentation being seen on regal suits of armour in real life, though to my knowledge plate armour wasn't worn over lamellar armour due to the sheer weight of doing so, even if it would have made your upper torso next to impossible to pierce. Protecting his right arm, the officer has a scale rear brace and van brace, while his left arm is protected by a plate pauldron and a plate van brace making for a very unique combination of armour types, this being the only warrior in the faction who utilises plate armour to such a degree, which makes sense given his elevated status. Turning to his helmet which looks to be bronze, it's a skull cap which is styled to resemble a lion's mane with an attached face mask which looks like a lion's face, an avantail being attached to the helmet to provide neck protection, a red gem being inset in the brow of the helmet. Lion shaped helmets are known from history, although to my knowledge the entire helmet was shaped to resemble a lion's head, rather than just the faceplate. Even so, this helmet looks amazing and is credit to the mod creator's skills. Finally, the unit officer weapon is a mace like those used by his men. As a unit, the Golden Lion Guard makes for good offensive infantry generals, being a perfect reserve unit to throw into the line where needed, packing a hell of a lot of a punch and having great durability, even if that is offset by their limited capabilities against cavalry. For a unique playstyle when choosing this faction, I recommend this unit as your choice of general, just because otherwise there's not really a big difference between this faction and the Black Snake Clan. A great unit overall, and a very visually striking one with their yellow and green colour scheme. Moving on from the general units, we come to the first of the faction's spear units, the Tribesmen Spearmen, who heavily resemble sub-Saharan African tribesmen with their tunics, robes, turbans and veils. This unit is essentially a colour swap of the Black Snake Clan Tribesmen Spearmen. These unarmoured tribal levies using square shields resembling pavisas, made of wood bound together by rope or wicker shields. Such shields seem common use in Africa. For weapons, these men use spears, the spearheads having an overloid shape with what looks to be a cutting edge, these weapons most likely being hunting implements pressed into service as weapons of war, looking a lot like the spears used by the Zulus historically. As the unit lacks an officer, we'll jump into its role. An early building block of your armies, they'll be the bulk of your forces being somewhat useful against light marauding cavalry, so I recommend replacing them as quickly as possible given that at the end of the day, they are a rabble force of assorted tribal villagers. Moving up from the tribesmen spearmen, we have the Desert Warriors, 
a more effective unit by far, which is also shared by the Black Snake Clan, these troops being a colour swapped version of them. For head protection, they use either turbans alone or helmets, which resemble nasal helmets, with cheek guards attached. For body armour, they wear a back and cuirass over their robes, on top of which are segmented metal plates, while the upper legs of each man are protected by fabric folds with segmented plates attached to them. While this armour isn't as extensive or as ornate as the equipment of the general units, such armour was commonly used during the Middle Ages, especially during the transitional period going from mail to plate in the 13th to 14th centuries. This armour provides a good amount of protection for the desert warriors, while not impeding them in a desert environment to a large degree the way a full plate harness would. The desert warriors discard shields, instead choosing to rely on their armour and their weapons for survival, each man wielding a tasseled glaive with the blade engraved with the symbol of a serpent. Glaives have been quite effective as flashing weapons, while also being useful at fending off cavalry, although these blades are quite thick and chunky, suggesting they be devastating in melee against enemy infantry. Turning to the unit officer, he wears the same Numenorean-inspired helmet that the serpent guards do, along with a male coif, while his body is protected by a lamellar hauberk. His forearm has been covered with banded van braces, such van braces are in common use before full plate van braces developed. Attached to his back, the unit officer has the typical wicker standard, while he follows the trend of his men and discards his shield, using the same glaive as his subordinates in battle. As a unit, the desert warriors are far better troops than the tribes and spearmen, and should be a priority when building armies in the early to mid-game as the unit puts in serious work, being a large component of the infantry forces, holding the line against the enemy and fending off marauding cavalry, a very useful unit which performs well even if its prowess is somewhat limited by its lack of shields. Moving up from the desert spearmen, we come to the truly professional, if weirdly named, infantry of the Golden Lion Clan, the Serpent Spearmen. These heavy spearmen are well armoured, the men of the unit choosing to use a wide variety of equipment to protect their heads, some using combinations of male coifs and turbans, while others use Numenorean inspired helmets and other helmets that look like the stereotypical Viking helmet, but with cheek guards, while appearing to be engraved with scales, an odd looking helmet for sure, all having male coifs, aventales or standards for upper chest protection. For body armour, they wear scale or lamellar hauberks, while their arms have banded van braces and segmented rear braces for protection, with a standard wicker frame on their back finishing off their appearance. For weapons, each man wields a spear with the same wavy tip as the lance, the tips being absolutely massive, being more like a sword blade mounted on the end of a pole than a spear tip, making for a spear that seems to be very unbalanced. In conjunction with this spear, each man uses an ovoid shield similar to the oval Roman scutum, rimmed with metal and emblazoned with the symbols of snakes and suns, the two cutouts on the side of the shield resembling those seen on the shields of the elves, perhaps indicating a slight exchange between both peoples. Moving on to the unit officer, he has a standard officer helm and coif combination in addition to a lamellar hauberk, his arms being protected by manacle while wielding the same shield and spear as his men. Turning to the unit's role on the battlefield, these guys will be the core of your army from the mid game to the end game, replacing the desert warriors to be your bulwark in battle against which enemy forces are broken, making for a mighty spear line. With their shields in addition to their weapons and armour, this unit can handle most of anything that's thrown at it within reason, being a leading unit in the horizon roster. Moving on from the Serpent Spearmen, we come to a unique unit that could be considered the peak of the Golden Lion's clan potential when it comes to spearmen, the Horror of the Desert. Despite their bows, these men are spearmen, combining the Haradrim skill with the bow with the hardiness of spearmen. Looking at their equipment, they wear a variety of helmets and turbans, all being equipment we've seen before. For their armour, they wear scale or lamellar hauberks, while their arms are completely covered in manica, although like all Haradrim units, they don't use greaves. On their backs they have the standard framework in addition to the standard Haradrim oval shield which is slung on their backs until the unit engages in melee, giving them a greater measure of protection when operating as archers. For weapons they use the recurve bow, a weapon most famously used by steppe archers such as the Mongols, who use this weapon to build their empire. Seeing these men use this weapon makes a lot of sense, given the historical background of the weapon as well as the fact that infantry using a longbow in addition to a spear makes for an overburdened warrior whereas the recurve bow is far more compact, their spear being the one seen previously. Looking at the unit officer, he's equipped identically to his men, so we'll skip him and move on to their role. On the battlefield, the horror of the desert makes for amazing archers and difficult to break spearmen, being highly effective at both their roles to the point they can beat top tier units of both categories when facing off against them. Their armour allows them to absorb heavy punishment in a shootout, while their ranged abilities allow them to whittle down enemy melee units before engaging them. The only real drawback to this unit is that it's fairly expensive, especially when fielding them in large numbers, and that when caught out of formation by cavalry, they can have a tough time abstracting themselves from such a situation. I definitely recommend using them when possible, although as I said for the Black Snake counterparts, 
The unit helps solidify existing victories more than bring about victories, if that makes sense. Not being as essential as the other units in the roster, with the horror of the desert looked at, all of the Haradrim Golden Lion Clan spear line have been covered, let's move on to their melee infantry. Looking at the first unit in that category, we have the Haradrim Fencers. Armour-wise, these troops are identical to the Desert Warriors, so we won't focus on their armour. For weapons, they use the same traditional Arab-inspired straight one-handed sword with no guard. Or for a shield, they use a round buckler strengthened with rivets around the sides. Turning to the unit officer, he has a traditional Numenorean-inspired helmet and coif in conjunction with a lamellar hauberk. His arms covered in male sleeves and segmented van braces, using the same sword and shield as his troops, being the only one in the unit to have a framework on his back. In battle, this unit may not be the most powerful, but it gives the Haradrim some offensive capabilities, especially at lower levels where this unit can perform fairly well, although when facing off against heavy infantry, the unit is at a marked disadvantage. Quite useful as an early piece in a Haradrim army, but it should be phased out when necessary. Moving up from the Haradrim fences, we come to the more advanced brethren, the Serpent Fences, who again, I should add, fight for the Golden Lion Clan. Armor-wise, these men are equipped identically to the Serpent Spearmen, back frames and all, so I'm going to skip their armor and move on to their equipment. For swords, they use the same blades as the Haradrim fences, while their shields are likewise the same. Turning to their unit officer, he too is identical to his spear counterpart, except he uses scale rather than lamellar armour, using his men's shield and sword. Battlefield-wise, these men are the equivalent of the serpent spearmen, providing the faction with good quality swordsmen that are much needed in a faction that lacks melee infantry. These guys giving their unit at least a modicum of slacking power in high-tier armies. A very useful unit which makes up the core of the faction's offensive infantry, and one which should be obtained as quickly as possible if victory when playing with the Golden Lions is something you wish, amassing them especially being crucial. With this unit looked at, all of the melee infantry of the faction, be they spearmen or swordsmen, have been covered, so let's move on to their ranged units. The lowliest of the faction's ranged units in terms of position, the tribesmen slingers are the ranged equivalent of the tribesmen spearmen, having the exact same armour or lack of it. For weapons, the men use leather slings, launching rocks at their enemies, slings being, despite their simple nature, incredibly effective weapons against armoured and unarmoured enemies, being a perfect example of a hunting or farming implement that found its calling in warfare, slingers in the classical world being among the most feared skirmishers of the time, especially those hailing from the Balearic Isles. In conjunction with their simple slings, the units use wicker and wooden bucklers, similar to the peltists and slingers of antiquity, though they tended to use heavier shields than wicker. Finally, in case of melee combat, the men have daggers at their side, such weapons being perfect at finishing off enemies, although in pitch battle, they're not quite ideal when armoured in such a manner. Seeing as the unit looks like it has no officer, we'll jump into its role. For an early game unit, the slingers are fantastic, giving the faction quite a lot of ranged power and options, making a perfect combination with the tribes and spearmen, that unit holding the line while this unit brings its firepower to bear. That said, this unit is fragile when dealing with enemy projectiles and cavalry will exterminate it on the spot. A great unit and one which can stick around in a Haradrim army for a fair amount of time compared to other units. Moving on to the next unit, we have the Haradrim archers who use the exact same equipment as the Haradrim fences and desert warriors, wooden recurved bows to differentiate themselves from those units along with nasty wooden cudgels and maces for melee combat, hammering down their foes. With an officer who's what we've seen before, the only thing to discuss about this unit is its role. In battle, the Haradrim archers are hardier units than the slingers who die in droves when facing off against determined ranged enemies. In comparison, this unit, which will make up the bulk of your ranged forces in low to mid-tier army builds, can absorb return fire to an acceptable degree and even engage in melee when necessary, though hopefully as a flanking unit rather than on the front lines. Not the mightiest archers in the world, even at their level. The unit does adequate, which I think is the best term that encapsulates them. Moving on to the final pure archer unit that the faction can field, we find ourselves facing the serpent archers, the archer equivalent of the serpent spearmen and fences and equipment, using recurve bows as their main weapon in addition to the straight Haradrim blade for use in close combat. Skipping the unit officer, the serpent archers are the core of your professional ranged forces, being a match for the ranged units fielded by other factions and being armoured enough to absorb enemy fire and fight in melee when needed, being strong enough to fend off low tier infantry. As a unit, they're only really eclipsed by the horror of the desert, who will generally supplement this unit rather than replace it outright. A good unit which is the foundation upon which the Haradrim affectation towards range combat is cemented. With this unit looked at, all the range units in the roster have been covered, leaving the cavalry to be looked at last. Beginning with the least of the melee cavalry available to the Golden Lion Clan, we have the Caravan Guards Riders, horsemen who ride unarmoured steeds and who find themselves to be mostly unarmoured, having only turbans of what I'm assuming is padded armour 
akin to a gambeson for body armour, gambeson being a widely used type of textile armour used throughout the Middle Ages, especially by lesser troops who couldn't quite gain access to metal armour, or for whom metal armour was unnecessary or unneeded. For shields, the men used a typical round buckler, or their weapons ranged from glaives to wavy spears. Such weapons in the hands of light cavalry making sense compared to lances, although glaives aren't quite a weapon for use on horseback as far as I know, although I may be wrong. The unit officer alone wears an acorn helmet with cheek guards and a lamellar hauberk, wielding a shield and a glaive. As a unit, these guys are lighter cavalry designed to run down enemy archers and give your armies mobility, something that's crucial for flexible strategies. The unit also being useful at fending off marauding light cavalry, although fighting heavy cavalry is a losing proposition. A useful unit for early tier army builds, a moment will often be the hammer at which you amass to charge the enemy from behind, being more than capable of breaking early game units. Moving on to the next mounted unit in the faction roster, we have the Haradrim Horse Archers. This unit of men rides unarmoured horses, the riders being equipped identically to the Haradrim Fences, wielding the same blade for close combat and a recurve bow to use at range, the officer being identical to the Haradrim Fencer officer, except on horseback. As a unit, these guys can be the core of your army, giving you the option to convert to a solely cavalry force, whittling down slower enemy armies with superior firepower before breaking them with shock cavalry, essentially using step warfare against the enemies of the Haradrim. Because this unit gives you that range of striking power and is easily amassed, I consider this one of the most important units in the roster, as if another strategy is adopted the unit can still be useful, provoking your enemies into reacting to your plays rather than making their own. A great unit as far as I'm concerned which can shape the way you play the game to an immense degree. Moving on, we come to the Haradrim Riders, who are outfitted identically to the Horse Archers, except everyone including the standard officer uses glaives as their weapon, with the bucklers on their arms for protection. Unit roll wise, in the mid game this unit will make up the core of your melee cavalry, being a unit meant for heavy combat if at a lesser level compared to the caravan riders, which are glorified scouts, this unit doing quite well at boosting the hitting power of the Golden Lion Clan, being more resilient to archers, spears and enemy cavalry than those who came before. Definitely a good unit to pick up but not to be or end all when it comes to mounted prowess in the Haradrim roster. Moving on to the next unit, the Serpent Lance is a professional cavalry of a high calibre, being essentially serpent fences on unarmoured horses, wielding massive lances as their weapon, making for a true shock cavalry unit. Skipping the officer who we've seen repeatedly before, this unit will make up the core of your shock cavalry in late tier armies, being devastating against enemy archers and being perfect for carrying up our enemy infantry, most likely using mass numbers to overwhelm any enemy cavalry before digging their lances deep into their enemy's backs. A great unit which will operate as the armoured fist of the Haradrim in most situations, over the faction has one unit that puts it to shame. That unit would be the Serpent Cataphracts, who are armoured essentially identically to the Serpent Guard, both horse and rider being extensively covered in armour, although the riders have nasal helms with a male veil completely covering their face, resembling Khazar and Cumin heavy cavalry. The unit is capable of being massed unlike the generals, and when the Cataphracts are deployed, almost nothing in the game stands a chance, although realistically, this unit will be the vanguard of your cavalry, being the spear tip or the serpent lances provide the bulk of your force. A very heavy unit which can defeat almost anything it charges into, although melee cavalry can pose a threat to it, especially when it's bogged down and surrounded. A great unit and one which will only ever be found in late tier armies where a unit of this power is sometimes required to shift the tide of war. Looking at the Haradrim Golden Lion clan overall, they're a faction who play almost identically to the Black Snake clan as of the current state of the mod, although that will probably change in the future. The only real difference between the two factions currently for form being their difference in generals. As such, the Golden Lions very much rely on their spears to hold the line, while their archers are expected to weaken enemies to the point that their spears and swordsmen can force them into retreat. Their cavalry coming into play with such a ploy is inviolable, charging into weakened enemies and sending them fleeing. The faction can also change from this strategy and become mounted if necessary, creating their hardiness for mobility, making for an adaptable faction on the open battlefield, even if they are completely lacking in heavy shock infantry. This flaw becomes really apparent in sieges where the faction suffers, especially on the offensive as it lacks units capable of punching holes in enemy defences the way that the other factions can. That said, these drawbacks help balance out the faction. If you've liked what you've seen, I ask you to like and subscribe. It might not seem like much, but for such a small channel, it will truly be appreciated. More videos covering this mod as well as others will be coming in the future, but if you want to watch similar content in the meantime, I suggest you check out the other videos I've made so far. This is your host Jakov, signing out.